First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. Begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. You have an activated pipe in which that produced this black chemical called melanin. We, what we did was gave a hard line in the sand between the different definitions of esoteric study and exoteric study. Playtime is over. No doubt, expand that mind. First Water Radio, your host, Dr. Eileen Bay, is back here once again. I'm getting ready to bring on my co-host, Brother Fahim. Are you here, brother? All right, we got different technical difficulties here. We're going to try to get this straightened out. Just give us a few minutes, and let's see what we can do here. All right, we're going to get into this show in a few minutes. Of course, what we're talking about tonight is ritual, ceremonies, and ancestral altars. Brother Fahim, are you on the line? Aha, I tell you, watch it out east. Hey, I tell you, watch it out east. All right, we got you on here finally. All right. All right, all right. Um, you heard the um, topic for tonight is ritual, ceremonies, and ancestral altars. All right. Oh, okay. um, we're going to be getting into that information tonight. All right, so um, let's begin with the science of rituals. Um, number one, the mind always has to be right. All right, and what I mean by that is that when you're practicing magic or trying to make something out of nothing, all right, um, and we're talking about apparent nothing, we're talking about as in there's elements in which that is invisible, unseen, and you take those elements in order to form what you want into physical existence, into sight from the unseen, so make it visible from the un, from the invisible. That takes time. There's an aspect of um, mental awareness that we have to um, come to understand in. Um, for example, um, the different areas of the brain, all right? You have the various brain waves, in which that around 30 to 45 
um, hertz. It taps into gamma, in which that is makes you aware. Um, then you have 15, um, 30 to 15 hertz, in which that is beta, in which that is associated with being alert. And then you have 10 to 8 hertz, in which that is alpha, in which that is associated with you being calm into a relaxed state, can even be a trance-like state. And you have 7 to 4 hertz, in which that is theta, in which that is rapid eye movement, which deals with the dreams. Um, then you also have um, 3 to um, 1, which is delta, which is a, um, associated actually with deep dreams, um, lucid dreaming, visions, prophecy, um, creativity, intuition, or intuitive states. Then you have 1 through 0, which is delta theta, which is associated with deep, dreamless sleep, or death itself. This is why they say sleep is the sister or the cousin to death. All right? Mm. Now, these various different hurt levels can be monitored by breath. And this is one of the things in which that when we go and review the secret, um, they left that secret out. All right? Anybody who watched the secret, you will see they left that secret out. Um we understand that these different states, which that is known, but these states are known within psychology. But even in psychology, when you go to school, they don't tell you that um, in order to tap into that soul principle, because the word psychology means the study of the soul is actually by via the breath, which is the spirit. Mm -hmm. All right, this is one of the things they don't tell you. So um, mm -hmm. we see that those particular states of consciousness also correlates to the chakra system, which they don't tell you about, which, you know, the word chakra is the Sanskrit word, which means wheels of thought, light, color, and sound, in which that are superimposed upon the endocrine gland system. All right, Master Sanyata, Grandmaster Sanyata says, what he states specifically that the chakras are the endocrine glands. They are, the endocrine glands are the physical manifestations of the template or the fourth dimensional state called the chakras in which that emits um, the aura, all right? So we know that um, the first state, which um, we refer to as the root chakra, all right, the root chakra um, or the base chakra as it is also referred to as um, correlates to Interpersonal consciousness, which is the ego or the spirit, you know, in which that deals with um, the lower self, of course, the beginning of the lower self, in which that symbolizes um, that gamma state, which that we just made mention of. All right? Then you have the navel chakra, in which that deals with interpersonal consciousness, or intrapersonal consciousness, in which that um, deals with the beta state. You have the solar plexus which is the life consciousness in which that, um, or what is also called collective consciousness, in which that deals with um, the ending of the beta state. You have the fourth chakra, which is the heart chakra, which is actually dealing with the thymus um, gland, in which that is the subconsciousness, which is with the altered states and the inner heart, which is um, called the alpha state which is, you know, like we said, the subconscious. Then you have the throat, and which that is super consciousness, and which that deals with theta state. And you have the um, first or third eye. The first eye sits above that, which is called the eye of Heru. Um, you know, which is magnetic consciousness, which deals with delta state. And then you have the crown, uh, which is the top of the head, which deals with infinite consciousness or quantum consciousness. Um, the collective unconsciousness. You have the collective consciousness at the solar plexus, but then you have the collective unconsciousness, which is the soul or the higher self called a saw, um, in which that deals with the delta theta state. So understanding your breath can take you to either one of these states if focused and done long enough in order to alter your perception. Mm -hmm. All right? Um, interpersonal consciousness When we talk about that That's like self-consciousness That means consciousness of one's own act Or state as belonging to Or originating 
in oneself, aware of oneself, or as an object of the observer of another. All right. Um, you have intrapersonal consciousness, which means to be aware of one's associations. All right. Um, you have life consciousness, or consciousness, in which that means um, that you're aware of one's own consciousness, sensations, and environment and that you're capable of thought, will, and perception. Um, it's responsible for collecting information, storing information in memory, making rational decisions, causing deliberate behavior, a person who has the tendency to relate to objects in this apparent reality as completely solid. However, the truth of the matter is that everything is light energy. Matter is nothing more than condensed light. In other words, slow down crystalline energy. All right? So... The consciousness of the average person um, actualized this holographic illusion as reality. Huh. All right? And so really it's an apparent perceptive reality, all right, in which they actually oscillated seven-tenths of a second. Okay? Matter of fact, Frank Barr, the um, so-called uh, research physicist um, from California Institute for the Study of Consciousness, um, he proposed that the light-sensitive molecules, which is melanin, found throughout the body may be a holographic film in the brain. Now, that's some deep shit. Yeah, it I is. Mean, um, David <laughs> Brom states that the matter is a kind of condensation or condensed frozen light. Now, Ball say melanin, which is the most primitive universal pigment in living systems and which is involved in a huge number of biological and biochemical um, interactions direct the activities of these molecules and, in effect, eat light and convert it into another form of energy in order to maintain and evolve matter. It is, he claims, a kind of slow-down light molecule at the crossroads between biological matter and energy. God damn. In the brain, he believes melanin acts as a black hole, which makes the holographic patterns possible. God damn. Mm. <laughs> For those niggas who didn't catch on, <laughs> what I just said was, is that melanin is the crossroads, in other words, the issue at Legba. All right? Balam Ish. Okay? Whatever term you want to refer, Yahshua. All right? Melanin is that which is able to take light and eat light, and you are able to take in this light and then be able to perceive, in other words, to conjure up what you want. Mm. But you can't do that. Unless you absorb light. Because a hologram to survive has to have light. Now, how we know that your physical body is a hologram is real simple. Quantum physicists have been saying this for a time. I can take a speck of blood. All right? I can take a strand of hair. I can take a um, spittle and actually clone a whole nother you into existence. Mm. Wow. So what that means is, is that each cell, which is 76 trillion cells, each cell can actually um, contains the whole genetic memory of your whole body in that one cell. It contains the whole genetic memory of every experience in which that you have gone through in this life, in this incarnation. And we can clone a whole nother you into existence. Thus meaning that your physical body is a hologram. i give you another science clue. Is that 99.9999% of your atomic structure, which is actually 7E27, in other words, this seven, and then there's 27 zeros after that seven atoms in your body. And each one of them atoms 
is 99.9999% empty space. Huh. <laughs> that means 0.0000 some odd 1% is actually apparent solid. Huh. Now, 99.9999% of the atom is empty space. I say it's potential energy in which that mm. by interaction with the stardust particles, which 300 tons of that stardust particles fall to the planet of daily, quantum physicists have stated that 90 to 93 percent of your physical body is actually composed of stardust material, that through the interaction of the stardust um, particles coming down and through the melanin, which acts as a cross road, of matter and energy that this light is filling up that empty space or that or transforming that potential that um potential energy into kinetic energy. This is what we propose. Wow. Now yeah. that means as long as you're not absorbing light, you can't make changes <laughs> in your life. So actually there would be no need to be teaching you rituals. Waste of time. Mm -hmm. Right. Or even setting up ancestral altars. Because, number one, you don't have enough energy to conduct the damn ceremony. (laughs) This is the reason why you have the sun worshippers, as they was called by the European back in the days, i.e. the Egyptians, or the Nubians, which means the burnt-faced, or the um, black the black ones, or Egyptian, or Egyptos, which means burnt face, or um, Ethiop, which means also burnt face. So this is where we became known as the burnt face, or the sun worshippers, is because we develop techniques in which that now, as they get into the Orient, they become called Qi Gong and Tai Chi. We know that there was an individual by the name of Bodhidharma. You get the book, Ancient mm-hmm. History by Wayne Chandler. He speaks in there specifically about Bodhidharma and how he was part of the Tamil people, which means the pre-Davidians, which means yeah. the ones who came from out of Ethiopia. They were Ethiopians. In other words, um, as we know that the Egyptians' um, priesthood was Ethiopian or Abyssinian, or as we call them, Nubians or Sudanese, as they are now referred to as, All right, or Somalian. Whatever name you want to refer to the people as, they traveled from out of Africa into India, okay? And Bodhidharma took this science of what became known in the Orient as the 18 Lohan style, which become called Qigong, mm. and which that developed to become Tai Chi. Now, anyone who knows that when you practice your Qigong or Tai Chi, you do it outside under the sun. So hence, when they seen people doing this, the stigma became known is that they were sun worshippers. So hence, when right. you look in our theology in ancient Kemet or Tamare or Tamarian, you will find that the old god Ra, in order to form man, we came forth from the tear of his eye. So Ra symbolizes the light, mm. the photonic energy. And from that, which is actually talking about a star, all right, Ra symbolizes stardust energy called prana or chi or ki energy in modern day terms. In Christianity, it's called the Holy Spirit. But this stardust energy, as it falls, in elliptical patterns or in geometrical shapes based on sound, it can form a six-star configuration or a five-pointed star configuration, hence, i.e., man and woman. And hence, we was formed from the eye or the tear of Ra. And they say the tear because, of course, our bodies is 75% water. Hmm. And when you... Um, 
and anyone knows who do any research that coconut water or saline, um, saline solution, which is sea salt or salt water, was actually used as blood transfusion. Originally, mm. they did not use blood transfusion. They was able to use coconut water, which has about the same plasmic connection as um, the same plasmic um, and a blood connection. They're about the same as far as um, the amount of iodine in it. And then you also have the sea salt or the saline solution in which that was used. Um, originally, in the olden days, before um, Charles Drew, all right, um, or Daniel Hell, before the blood transfusion, before um, the heart surgery, all that was based on um, the, that that same information, right? Daniel Hell with the blood transfusion, if I'm not mistaken, um, and with that, Matter of fact, the, the, the story, shoot, it was crazy that um, he needed a blood transfusion. Um, he was here in North Carolina and got in a car accident and needed a blood transfusion. They weren't given one, and so he died. But yet, he's the one who came up with the wow. blood transfusion. Right. So this mm. is some ironic things going on here. But before him, they was using sea salt or saline solution. Which you know that in the hospitals they still use saline solution to this day. Okay. Now, the reason why I bring it all of this up is because um, salt is very important as part of ritual because it symbolizes um, the salt within one's blood. Okay. Just keep that in mind as we continue going over this information. Now, we have the subconscious, and which that means the underlying awareness. Um, it accepts the message if perceived as true, whether or not they are based on actual facts. So the, that means the subconscious doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's fantasy. It is only responding to what um, you perceived. It's responsible for the regulating body functions, such as breathing, your memory um, uh, management, your goal-seeking creativity, and automatic behavior. The reptilian portion of the brain controls this psyche, all right, called the involuntary system. All right, next you have the super consciousness, which means um, being above or beyond time and space, that which is apparent um, to the so-called five senses. Actually, there's only one sense, and that's feel or touch, as we refer to it as. The so-called senses exist within limitation with no means of escape, except when you are able to um, up the ante and begin to start going into a deeper threshold. In other words, in terms of human consciousness, uh, we found out that it is shaped like a cube. And if a person would take the cube or egg-shaped um, auric um, sphere, um, that fits around the human body and calculate the size, you can actually tell where the person is in consciousness, which level of consciousness in which that they are on based on the information that I'm talking about. The mind becomes open and the practitioner um, acquires various miraculous powers called the sethis, all right, within yogi um, traditions. These are called the so-called HSP or higher sensory perceptions and often, and oftentimes called ESP, which is extrasensory perception. All right, but you can develop that at the super consciousness level. All right, so you would develop such as psych chemistry, right, uh, which is the ability of touching a physical object and identifying a person by their auric energy residue. In other words, their thought wave that was previously left behind. All right, mm. um, you can develop miraculous powers. Um, you can develop the gift of levitating, the ability to raise in the air in apparent defiance of gravity, which actually is six-dimensional. So to do so, you have to reach into the sixth dimension of consciousness, hmm. All right, which is actually magnetic consciousness in order to reverse the polarity 
of the poles of what we call gravity, which is actually oscillates at 7.8 hertz. You would have to be able to break that threshold. Then you have clairvoyance, in which that, of course, is the extended sight, in which that correlates to the gifts of wisdom and knowledge and prophecy, which is the psychic ability, um, which is a lower form of, of um, which actually is dealing with the solar plexus. The solar plexus, um, with mastering the solar plexus, you can actually do what's called OBEs, out-of-body experience or astral projection. You have precognition, which is the ability to perceive the future, um, the knowledge of something prior to it happening. All right, intuition is the ability to perceive the truth about the process of thought. In other words, they know it. Of course, you have telepathy, telepathics, in which that is mental communication or the ability to transfer thought to another individual species without the use of spoken word or telephone. All right, you have discerning or uh, distinguish between that of what we call spirits. Guidance from the higher source can be identified by these traits. Recognizing the higher power will be able to give you that ability simply by recognizing the higher power. In other words, your higher self. And you coming in contact or in communion with your higher self. All right? So these are just some of the sciences in which that individual will gain. All right? So you also have clear audience which is the extended hearing, you know, um, the clear sentience, which is extended smell, um, clear gestation, which is um, extended taste, all right? All of that is part of super consciousness. Now you have magnetic consciousness, which means um, an attracting power beyond any distance. So great that this power controls even the rays of light from the sun. Mm. Now, wow. understand what I just said. means in attracting power beyond any distance so great that the force controls every ray of light from the sun. Now, no coincidence that the sun is 93 million miles away. The 93rd attribute of Allah is El Nur, which is the light. And it takes 8 minutes and 20 seconds for the rays of the sun to touch down to the planet Earth. No coincidence that it takes 8 minutes and 20 seconds for the um, blood to pump through your body and then bathe mm -hmm. the brain in nutrients, in nutrients, vitamins and minerals and etc. And your brain is 90% water. All right? That's no coincidence. When you practice pranic healing or when you practice Reiki, you will notice that you are able to draw energy down through the head into the heart, out of the out through the arms and the hands, into an individual or into yourself. That's what it means that you're able to control the rays of the sun or the rays of light from the sun with my mag uh, magnetic consciousness. In other words, you are a cosmic being at that particular point. The last level, which is the seventh level, seven meaning meaning the level of God or, you know, um, seven is the, le is the numeral of God. But you have infinite consciousness, meaning the quality of being unlimited, boundless, existing beyond time, space, and quantity. All right? Mm -hmm. So what happened is that the ancient mystery school called her Bach, which is the light teachings or called the inner traditions, you know, um, another name for it nowadays is Freemasonry, but another name of the sacred teachings is called Hakka, which is the teachings of Tahuti. All right, together mm -hmm. it is called the mastery of the of the lesser and greater mysteries, which is the lower self, right. which is Set, and the higher self, which is Heru, mm -hmm. or as it is called Samatawi, which is called within our school of thought, Islamism or the Moorish science. The science symbolizes the tree of knowledge of good and evil or duality. All right? So when we read in the 101 Quran for Moorish children, or Moorish Americans as it's now called, it says, what does the devil sometimes, um, sometimes call? What is the devil 
sometimes chorus is the lower self. How many selves are there? Two. Name them, higher self, lower self. What people represent the higher self, the angel who protects mm-hmm. the holy city of Mecca. What people, rep- what people represent the lower self. They're the ones who was cast out the holy city and those who accept the teachings. What is the higher self? The higher self is the mother of virtues and the harmonies of life, breed, justice, mercy, love, and right. Can the higher exactly. self pass them? No. Why? Because it is a law in man. Exactly. What is the lower self breed? Mm-hmm. Hatred, slander, lewdness, murder, thief, theft, and everything that harms. What did the higher self say to the lower self at one time when he met Satan? Where are you going, Satan? And what was the answer of the lower self given, um, gave to the higher self? I'm going to and fro on the earth seeking whom I may devour. All right, so that's the key right there, all right, mm-hmm. in which that when you do your research, you will find that some of the time we actually are the lungs or the nostrils in which that balances the energy and promote harmonial balance within the endocrine glands. All right? This is what people are feeling to realize. And it says here, also in the um, seventh chapter of the Moorish Holy Quran, know thyself and the pride of his creation, the line uniting divinity with matter. Behold, a part of Allah himself within thee. Remember thy own dignity, nor dare be sin to evil or to meanness. All right? Now, when those who do the research, you will see that on the temple walls of ancient Kemi, you will see Heru and Set, and they are holding the line. They are tying the line um, around the unk symbol in which that also balances and have the scales as well as also called the jid. And um, the foot of each is on top of what appears to be um, the heart all right, or the core. Right, you got to look at the symbol of what I'm talking about, and that's some deep information right there in that regard. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, we understand this higher magic and this or greater magic and lesser magic. Mm-hmm. Right, if you get the books by King Solomon, allegedly, um, you have the lesser mysteries of um, um, the lesser keys of King Solomon, and you have the greater keys of King Solomon. Um, the lesser symbolizes silver, the greater symbolizes gold. Um, both of these symbolizes the sun and the moon. Um, teachings actually coming from Polarity. Um, emerald tablets, in which that is known as the teachings of Tahuti, in which that connects all this information that we're talking about. All right, you have the seven principles of Tahuti, which deals with mentalism, which that's what we're talking about right now in the science of mentalism. You have to know all these natural sciences before you even practice magic and really understand what's, what you're dealing with. All right? Um, you have mentalism. You have correspondence. You have um, polarity. You have gender, which is sex, or you have karma, which is cause and effect. You have rhythm. You have vibration. All right, these are seven principles of Tahuti or Jehuti. All right, his consort Mayat has seven principles, and has a cardinal principles, in which that also when you're dealing with the science of magic, you have to keep these principles in mind so that you stay within the field of karmatic debt. In other hmm. words, um, you don't want to. Continue gathering more debt karmatically than you can issue out because that means that your heart will be heavy than the feather on the scales of balance of my yacht. And you will have to incarnate back here again or either into another third dimensional apparent reality in order to mm-hmm. continue on with your lesson. Okay? That's the shame part. But her seven principles is righteousness, a right truth, reciprocity, balance, harmony, order, all right? And also what we refer to as 
love. Now, this is the same as love, true peace, freedom, and justice, in which that we have within the five, um, well, within um, the justice lessons. You have the justice, um, but you also have it within the Moorish Holy Temple of Science or the Moorish Science Temple, all right, um, teachings, love, true peace, freedom, and justice. Those are five of the seven principles of my yacht. So everything you do must be based on those five to seven principles. Mm -hmm. Not just as a more, but as a person who do not want to incur any more debt against them. All right? And do not want any more karma and understand that they do not want to incarnate back here again in another life cycle. All right? This is higher magic or greater magic is what we're talking about where you seek not to change anything but there are times when you have to use lesser magic or low magic and change things it's just like you putting um, you're taking a frequency and you jamming that frequency in order to change it and Mm -hmm. you're putting a stronger frequency over top of it that's what magic is yeah Right, 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 right. So Mm -hmm. lower magic is based on that, all right? I wish that that the vibrations from you, all right, understand that particles and waves are essentially the same. Um, Waves are unperceived particles. When perceived, the waves become particles, all right? This has been scientifically proven by quantum physicists. So when you look at a wave, it collapses to become particles. Now, what this means is that you are able to use your thought waves to jam the frequency of the timeline of the apparent reality. And as a magi or magician, you have the ability in order to do so with your thoughts. Remember, thought travels 124 billion, on 24 billion miles per second. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. So that's faster than the speed of light, which only travels 186,000 miles per second, and definitely faster than the speed of sound, which only travels 1,120 feet per second. So thought waves are the strongest. This is why within the Yoruba tradition, they tell you that the strongest of the Orishas is Ori. Now listen to what I just said. The word Orisha, which there are seven African powers, all right, he had um, Oludumare, which is the universal. You have a batala, which symbolizes the crown. Um, Oludumare is actually Ray, or Ra, which symbolizes that um, that energy called Chi or Ki or Prana. Or batala symbolizes the crown chakra. All right, um, then you have Oya, Emiya, Oshun, Ogun. Um, Yeshua Legba, you know, so there's seven of them, seven African powers. All of them seven symbolizes the seven Elohim or the creative spirits spoken of within um, Judaism known as the seven Elohim or the seven <laughs> creative spirits spoken of within the Holy Quran, um, Circle 7, as well as also within what we refer to as the 101s and the 102s, a Moorish questionnaire. They are nothing more than your seven endocrine glands or your seven chakras. So when you call upon Ishua Legba, you're actually calling upon your root chakra. The energy of the root chakra. And this is why the color of Ishua Legba is the color red. All right? So they symbolize all of these. These are the seven archangels that is made mention of within Judaism. You have Michael. You have Gabriel. You have Raphael. Israel. Gimiel, Samuel, and also Uriel. Mm-hmm. So the same African power symbolizes the same um, African um, slash um, Judaism and um, archangels. Okay? So once you understand that this is all about the power of the mind, as we say, Ori is the root of the word Orisha. And Ori is the most powerful, which is the mind. The mind is the most powerful. Because we just broke down to you in the beginning that the mind can bring about all these things that we're talking about. 
This is the science of magic. So when you're doing your ritual, you come up with a ritual in which that, um, not necessarily that you have to read from out of a book. You can start out mm-hmm. that way in order to get the concepts, but the, really the only concept you need is having the four elements. Mm-hmm. Right? You know what the four elements are, earth, air, water, and fire. Mm-hmm. You take those four elements and you set up your altar based on that, on those four elements of air, water, and fire. So you have a glass of water. The fire is going to be the burning of the incense as well as also that symbolizes the air as the smoke rays up as well as also the lighting of the candle which symbolizes some more fire um, in which that you would say a prayer over that um, particular candle in order to leave an auric residue for the candle can burn too. Because remember, everything which that you touch leaves a memory imprint or impression. This is the reason why sex is so powerful because you can actually leave your thoughts on the individual. <laughs> this is the reason why those ethereal ties between man and woman is so powerful that they get to the point where you actually can sometimes think the same thing, take the same words, finish each other's sentences because this memory being impressed upon each other during a sexual act. Well, the same thing with a candle. You are intercoursing with the candle. Your hands are wrapped around the candle, and you are profusely saying what you want in your mind, but the energy which is left there, the candle burns to that energy in order to bring about um, the manifestation of what you want. So that symbolizes also the candle itself is symbolic to the earth, as well as also you can have earthly things there, gems, emeralds, crystals, cat's eye, whatever that you want can be there. Symbolizes also coming from the earth. Okay? So all of that symbolizes that science. So as long as you have that down pat of air, water, and fire, your mind is ori, which is the most powerful thing. See, your left hemisphere of your brain needs something tangible in order to utilize. The right hemisphere of the brain is abstract. It doesn't need anything tangible. But it can, it's holistic, so it can gather the thing in which that you're doing, which is earth, air, water, and fire, and take all of that and make sense out of it. Okay? What's really going on? Mm-hmm. So that's what's really going on. So you need these things for ritual. The word ritual is derived from the word right, mm-hmm. as in um, Masonic right, which is a ritual. Right. And we talk about right is talking about you know R I T E is derived or is a derivative of R I G H T, which is being right or righteous. All right. Now. That's what this is supposed to do, is to make you righteous, which is, once again, one of the seven, the five to seven principles um, of my yacht. And that's what is supposed to be taking place. All right? Now, ritual, that depends on how you put it together. There's various different occults. You can um, study the Rosicrucians. They have... Uh, rituals and ceremonies within their particular uh, society, the Golden Dawn, the OTO, the mm-hmm. AA, uh, Astaria. You know, we can go on with the different rituals and rites uh, within these particular um, occults or different schools. And we're saying occult because it's talking about hidden information or what they believe to be hidden. All right, now. Understand the different sciences of candles. We talk about candle magic. Um, so you will want to have a candle in which that correlates to the situation in which that you're in. All right. So, like for example, um, black has the ability in order to absorb negativity. So if you think that you're in a negative environment or that there's a lot of negativity being cast at you, and how you know negativity is being cast at you because um, you get clumsy, you lose hmm. things. 
Yeah. Um, you're not thinking right. It's like um, you're one-track-minded, mm-hmm. and you're not able to do the things the ones that you normally do on an everyday basis. It gives you an honorary, uh, honorary attitude. Right, nothing. you have an honorary attitude. Right, you know. you're irritated. You get irritated very easily. All right, so that's how it's you know that energy. negative thought forms are being cast mm-hmm. at you. All right, so whenever you feel like that, and there's no reason why, you know, if you're taking your vitamins and you're taking your minerals and you're taking your, um, your, you know, your various herbs, you're drinking enough water, you know, you're eating properly, you have this vegetarian, vegan, fruitarian diet, and you're doing your breathing exercises, and your pH just seems to be off that day. Mm-hmm. Well, possibly. A negative thought form could have been cast at your way. In mm-hmm. other words, people thoughts are things. And when you think negatively about a person, it can actually affect them if they're not high enough, you know, in their vibratory rate. But we gave also, um, I'm one of the few, and we should also give you a way in order to end and dead all of that shit by simply increasing the frequency of your auric field. Do the science of breath. You have three methods in what is called pranic healing. You have empty retention, you have 7171, and you have 6363. Hmm. It expands your auric field from the average person's auric field, which is only three feet, to more than 15 feet outside of you. And some masters can get their auric field up to a damn mile. Okay? So, the stronger your auric cell is, the less a thought form can actually pierce a hole or pierce leaks into your auric cell. That's how you weak, get weakened and how this ease creeps into the physical body. It's first the shell of your auric cell is being eaten by a negative thought form from the attachment of it. Okay. And it creates these holes and leaks in which that um, causes the rays of your auric field to become limp, drained, deficient, um, 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 deficient. Okay? Now, when you're talking about these negative thought forms, um, you have also have a thing which is a person can also be a psychic vampire. And what I mean by that is that knowingly or unknowingly, they have the ability in order to absorb energy from your auric cell. Mm-hmm. All right? And you go home drained after interaction with them. Okay? So this is a walking thought form. Their thoughts are negative. And they are depleted of energy, so they feel like they can take energy from you to be rebooted or be re-energized or be revitalized or be rejuvenated. Right, this is the same thing when you read about the story in the Bible about the woman who was issuing blood for 12 years and she believed that it just by touching the hem of Jesus' garment, she would be healed. Well, remember... Um, let's not focus on just the woman being healed because that's the happy part that niggas always get happy about in church. <laughs> I remember that. They was happy about the woman doing but they never remember that Jesus also turned around and was like, yo, who the hell touched me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because he felt the drain. Nigga drained him. <laughs> now, we talking about this is all allegorical, but you got to still take it and understand what they was trying to teach you in the underlying story. Mm-hmm. You don't throw the damn baby out with the bathwater, niggas. You don't do that. That's right. You find the metaphysical, the esoteric, and the moral, and the moral or the morality symbolism behind what is being conveyed through the story. Remember, Jesus spoke in parables, which is metaphors, which is allegories. So you might not get it the first time when you read it. Right. But anyway, she was a psychic vampire. She drained his energy. Jesus wanted to know. That's why he wanted to know, who the hell touched me? 
Then he found out, oh, it was a woman, okay. All right, I let up off of you. Um, you had a problem for 12 years, okay, all right. Well, by your work, you know, you heal, you know, going about your business. Basically, don't do that shit no more. Because <laughs> you didn't have permission to be touching all up on me, yo. That, that's what happened. Okay, so um, understand what you are dealing with. So if you have a per- so these negative thought forms they can affect you. All right, so we gave you the solution to that by doing your breath exercises and then also doing your lighting candle ceremony called candle magic, which you have your altar set up. Um, sometimes you can get a white sheet um, and put over the altar. Um, the altar can be anything in which that you utilize. It can be um, any tabletop or any. Um, dresser or whatever you want to utilize It is simply you putting it together Alright Now an altar is different than a shrine You can do also a shrine Which is more elaborate And shrines are normally dedicated to Just one specific ancestor or deity Okay um, You will see shrines Like if you go to um, Okinawa or Korea right. Right? Or right. China or Japan, they have shrines set up for their ancestors. Yes, they do. Okay. Now, understand what we mean by ancestors. You have people who passed on and transitioned, but the thoughts of the, you know, of that ancestor has not been strengthened enough in order to transform them from a dead relative into a living ancestor. Okay. That has not happened. So, the more you mention that individual with you, within your mind, with your family, and them tell stories, and y'all have the stories between each other um, about, you know, what was funny to you, what was funny to them, and y'all have these stories, and the more energy y'all can conjure, the stronger the ancestor become. And as a matter of fact, on their next incarnation, all right, they will come back in a better situation. This is the reason why everybody around the world acknowledges their ancestors except for us. Mm-hmm. The so-called Negro. All right? Now we're getting to start getting, getting back to that. And no, it does not mean that you have to do any human or animal sacrifices either. Right. All right? Yes, life is in the blood. But the same color that blood is, is the same color that prana or chi or ki energy is. It's red. So that means the more you interact with the star dust particles, which is the color red, um, you actually are taking in the origin of life itself. And the reason why blood is red is because um, it is the physical manifestation of prana. All right? The living Ra inside of you. Remember, I told you that the human being was formed based on the coffin text or the um, and the pyramid text, which actually come, when both of those are together, you have what is called the Book of Coming Forth by Day and Night, misnomer the Book of the Dead. Um, you will have um, Ra being, um, the human being being made from the tears of Ra. And once again, tear is water. It's talking about your blood. So, um, Ra and his tear, all right, is one and the same. So mm. he's talking about blood. Hence Adam, which means red or blood, or Adama within Hebrew, which means red or blood. That is Ra. Within Hebrew is El Roy. Within English is Leroy. <laughs> all right. This is why Bruce Leroy, all right, he got the glow once he remembered that he was the master. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay? Symbolism at its best. No doubt. All right? And that glow is, is um, emitted from your blood, from your endocrine glands, and the, um, and those ductless glands excreting um, hormones, their, their chemical hormones. In balance throughout the blood, the light comes off 
and through via the skin. Hence, you emit light. Now, the problem with us is that 90% of the energy from the top of the head leaves out the body as heat. That is direct opposite of a lightning bug or what is called a firefly. Mm -hmm. Where 90% of the energy is kept within the body, which allows for them to light up like they do. And only 10% is let out from the top of the head of the lightning bug as heat. So the whole science is to actually make ourselves lightning bugs. All right? By Mm -hmm. the raising of the Kundalini through that the jid, which is the spinal column, through the 33 vertebrates, which is the, nothing more than the 30 degrees within Freemasonry. Jesus died at the age of 33. So as that energy comes up from the sacral bone area, which is called the golden, um, golden, um, you go to Ecclesiastics, you have the silver cord and you have the golden bowl. That is called the bowl, the golden bowl, because Kundalini means bowl. All right? And it's wrapped three and a half times core you at the base of the spine. Kunta means um, bowl. So that golden bowl is the sacral bone, which is a triangular um, pyramid shape, downward looking structure right above the coccyx, which is the tailbone area, in which that the Kundalini dwells inside. And as it um, the eight dividing cells of mitosis, which are the eight cells in which that form the physical body in existence. They never change your whole entire life. These um, cells, which is part of the 76 trillion cells um, of the body, which changes every seven years over, or over a seven-year period, these eight never changes the whole time. And it's mm-hmm. from this that the Kundalini um, rays up from. It's like you tap the golden egg. And it activates and it opens and releases this atomic energy, all right, which is equivalent to the surface of the sun when it's at the base, which is 6,000 degrees. But as it comes up and begins to give you that glow around the top of the head, like you're the master, it goes to high as 2 million degrees. Hmm. And guess what? That is the fire or the burning bush that was not consumed. The burning bush is talking about your physical body. If I cut you open sideways, you will see what looks like a bush, which is your nervous system. Huh. You also refer to it as the tree of life. When the energy is ascending, it's the tree of life. When the energy is descending, it's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But it's the tree of knowledge. So hence, Adam and Eve knew each other, and Eve conceived. So when the energy is descending down from the crown into the root chakra, you receive knowing. In other words, sexual experience. Mm -hmm. When you know your partner or your mate, and you conceive because that child comes from your knowledge that you have gathered. It is a physical representation of all your memories incarnated. On your thought, by seven thought. generations on your mother's side, seven mm. generations on your father's side, mm. is a walking, living thought form. Mm. A mm. thought of a law, garbed in flesh. What is man? Man is a thought of a law, garbed in flesh. What is an angel? A thought of a law, garbed in flesh. What is a prophet? A thought of a law, garbed in flesh. So you either want to be a man, a prophet, or an angel. You make the choice based on the garbage of the flesh. And what composes and keeps the flesh together? It's the breath of life. The breath of life does that. It holds your physical composition together. Your inhale and your exhale. You don't believe me? Stop breathing and watch your ass go to hell. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got nine one one. I have to call that I have to call them. <laughs> because you no longer compose. You start to decompose. Mm-hmm. Stop thinking and stop playing like the breath ain't the most important thing. 
Y'all better get this shit right. I know that. <laughs> Y'all better start getting this right. The breath in conjunction with the mind is the manifestation along with the emotions. You need uh-huh. the breath, you need the mind, and you need the emotions. All uh-huh. three is how you manifest a thing into existence. Once again, I'm going to give you the formula. The breath, the mind, the emotions. <laughs> Keep playing. Huh. Keep huh. thinking that it's just about the food you eat. Uh-huh. And so you're going to have a good diet. Detox. Right. Stop breathing and see your diet won't mean a damn thing because you be dead. Hmm. Your breath is Fast. more important yeah. than food. Your breath is Fast. more important than water. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we know the formula. We know that you can go without water for two weeks. You can go without food for 40 days. But go without the breath for three minutes and see what happens to you. Keep playing. Mm -hmm. Keep playing. And not thinking, once again, that the breath is the most important and the most essential element in this life process. All right? Yeah. That's what's going on. When you do a ritual, your ritual is based on the science of breath. Tapping into those seven conscious states in which we made mention of earlier, in which that taps into those seven archangels, in which taps into those seven African powers, which taps into those seven Elohim, which taps into those seven um, openings, or what's called the seven... Um, opening seals, um, the seven opening of the seals, or what they call the seven um, churches in the book of Revelation, which is nothing more than the seven chakras. All right, this is what is going on. The breath does all of that. The breath determines a different level as that Kundalini comes up through that spinal column. Okay. All right. So we understand that. You must understand that if you want to learn the science of ritual ceremonies and um, ancestral altars. Rituals is coming from the reptilian portion of the mind. The reptilian portion of the mind loves symbolism, loves to deal with rituals, things that you have to do over and over and over and over again. Okay, the neocortex portion of the brain, which is the frontal lobes, don't give a fuck about that. You don't have to do any rituals or ceremonies or any ancestral altars. That's why it's called the neo, which is just like you've seen within the movie Matrix. That's when you got to the level where there is no more need for ritual ceremonies and altars because all that is left hemisphere thinking. Now you're dealing with the right hemisphere, which deals with the holistic mind now. You're seeing everything from a bigger picture. This is when you're working now, the greater magic. Not the lesser magic. All right, this is the science of what is taking place here. All right, so when you're dealing with ceremonies, you know, we know that when we, um, when you wake up in the morning, that's actually the ritual when you brush your teeth, you wash your face, you wash your ass. Um, that's the ritual. You do that on an everyday basis. Okay? Um, ceremonies. Um, when you graduate from high school, when you graduate from college, there's a ceremony in which that takes place. All right? You put on those four corner caps, and those four corners symbolizes you mastering the four elements. You mastering. Um, the foundation of your existence, 360 degrees, which is that square, which symbolizes physical coronation. You have mastered it. All right? So when you put on that little square cap, all right, which makes you an alumni, hence an illuminated one, you actually is performing a ritual. You're performing a ceremony. That's what is taking place. 
Well, you base your own ritual and ceremony based on the things in which that you want. Don't have to be elaborate. Don't have to be um everything have to be rhymed with words. You don't have to sound like Jesse Jackson every time. Martin, what we gonna do today? We going to jagatize. Now, Jesse, you know that's not a word. You ain't got to damn do that. Just simply pay attention to your environment. It's a ritual. For example, when you wake up in the morning and you see certain animals, those animals can tell you what will bring, well, what will happen in your day. Nature tells you. Nature is the ritual, is the ceremony itself. You are acted in a play. The world is the stage. William Shakespeare, Francis Bacon, allegedly said that. That you're merely an actor in a play on the on the world stage. So everything you're doing is based on a ceremony. If you want to know the truth of the matter. But are you using Ori, which is your mind, to dictate the results? Every day when you wake up, you should fine-tune Ori, your mind, in order to bring about wealth, health, protection, success, abundance. All of these things should be done on a daily basis upon waking up before going to sleep. Throughout the day, this is why Muslims have a good understanding and overstanding of that because upon waking up in the morning, 5.30 in the morning, they make Salat, Fajr, they Maghrib, at night, they're doing five times prayers. And oftentimes in Sufism or into those who understand the ritual of raising fire, which that's what the word um, salat means, to raise fire, which is talking about the raising of the Kundalini, those seven positions raise the Kundalini, you are able to put within your mind right before you dicker what you want. All right. After you salam your angels, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. When you turn your head to the to the right or to the left, and you talk to those angels, which is actually the angel, which is Tahui, which is writing down the good and bad deeds, which is actually the recorder, which is the medulla oblongata, which is at the back of the head. That's the copying center or the memory um, place. That is where your store, um, your um, past lives are stored up. Connected to the oversoul, as well as also you can receive a photographic memory. All of that is there. You see, everything that you've been looking for is already within you. You didn't know that these stories was talking about you. You believe that these stories were talking about them or he, something outside of you. But yet the Bible tells you, great is he within you than he that is in the world. Hmm, interesting concept. If you know, for those Christians who was really listening, I was. That's how I got into metaphysics. Is because I listened very hard in Christianity. I listened very hard in Islam. I listened very hard in Buddhism. I listened very hard in Hinduism. I went through all those schools of thoughts. To come to the understanding, all oh, this shit is metaphysical. And we have taken these deities, these so-called many different gods, which is nothing more than the same um, science coming from out of Africa in various different languages and dialects, which is actually talking about you, your physical body, your emotional, mental, spiritual, and soul experiences.
All right? Now, many say, well, you you know, you have to have um, the different colors of the candles. We have red, which is good for energy, passion, um, sex is a magnet magnetizing color. People are drawn to that color. So um, it symbolizes the ego, the lower self, the trickster, hence Isha Legba. All right, the coyote, the wolf, whichever term that we want to refer to it is, whether it's coming from any indigenous culture. But that red symbolizes the open of the way or at the crossroads. Next you have orange, which symbolizes nurturing, which is good for, um, which is identical to the navel chakra, so it's good for um, storage of energy. So hence also good for releasing of energy. So orange would be good to release Energy, whether it's positive or negative, positive to bring about a desired effect, negative to help uh, remove um, bad energy. Orange can be utilized also as such. Then we have yellow. Yellow is good for intelligence. Um, If you're taking a test or if there's things in which that you need to remember and not forget, in other words, one of the colors in which that can be actually utilized in order to um, help with gaining hidden knowledge, right? The color orange can be, um, yellow can be used. Next, you have green, which is a healing color, symbolizes abundance and success, wealth. It can be used as such. All right, major thing is healing, in which that um, if you have any dis-ease ailments, illnesses in the body, the color green can be utilized in order to help um, rid your body of that, um, especially if it's um, anything but cancer. All right, for cancer, I would use the nurturing um, color, which is the orange color, um, if there's cancer. You don't want to use the color green when there's cancer because green symbolizes growth and abundance. And you do not want cancer to grow. All right? So you want to diminish cancer. You will want to use a orange candle in which that will help with um, if the last thought imprinted upon that candle is for you that you want to be healed from cancer, then the candle will burn to that frequency in order to help um, change what is going on with you. Next, you have sky blue, which deals with communication. Psalms 45 is excellent in marriage as far as being able to connect the male and female principle and to tie them closer together in um, in a bond in which that is conducive to both of their growth. Sky blue is that candle um, color in which that you can utilize that. Good for any communication, any justice in court, any law. All right? Keep the law away. You can use that for that um, also. The next candle would be the color indigo, which correlates to the third eye, in which that um, symbolizes um, spirituality, psychic abilities. You want your sadis or your siddhas, which is your psychic powers to be developed higher to a higher frequency, then you would light the indigo color candle in which that will open and activate um, your third eye um, via the pineal, the pituitary gland, beaming the white light to the pineal gland in order to help um, activate and open up. Well, the color indigo would do that, as well as the next candle color is violet or what is called purple or gold or white, all right? One of those um, three um, colors 
can be utilized. Purple and violet is basically one and the same. Um, but gold and white, all right, gold in particular, uh, let me just say white repels negative energy and can be utilized as a healing color, but gold is the master healing color, all right, out of all the candles. Um, also, um, gold is also somebody also to abundance and success, and if there's money in which that is due to you, in which that you've been waiting for for a long time, then you can light a gold candle in order to um, get that quicker and get that popping for you, all right? Um, the violet slash um, purple candle, which symbolizes like the violet flame, in which that brother Azariah speaks about, can also remove negative thought forms from around you, as well as also um, shells and disincarnated spirits, give you the ability to discern spirits. It also gives you the ability in order to um, have spiritual powers now. In other words, it symbolizes um, the seven cents. So you have gained the ability of psych chemistry, clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairgestance, clairsentience. Um, all of these gifts are developed at that particular level. All right? It starts at the third eye, but there's still like a thin veil on which that oftentimes you have to pierce in order to get, because that's the sixth sense, in order to pierce to get to the seventh sense, which is the crown chakra, which the violet symbolizes that particular color. Um, which symbolizes um, you coming back in bliss and oneness with um, Melchizedek, or who is known as Michael, the archangel, who is called Abatala, hence the color white candle um, for the crown also, called Abatala, everything is white, white on your head, um, you know, so forth and so on. All right? Um when you reach a holy man status, you gain that golden light or halo around the top of the head. So all of these things correlate, all right? So understand what is going on. Um, I'm going to get ready to go to the phone lines right quick. We have area code 111. This is out of the country. Peace. All right, we're going to go to 424. Area code 424, you're on the line. Peace, God. How are you? All right. Doing well, doing well. Yes, I, this is, I said, I said from Cornia. Yes, greetings. Yeah, and I was just calling in, you know, I love your show. I'm always promoting you. And I would just really like to thank you from the bottom of my heart for all this great work you do. I mean, you you went the long way, so I could take the shortcut. <laughs> right, so, you're right. You right about that. Twenty five really, years. I really you're appreciate right. it. <laughs> I mean, I, it's, it feels like I've been given a crash course in life ever since I came into consciousness. You know, right. I've been blessed to come across these great master teachers that just been enlightening me and enhancing my life. You know, right. and so. I, I'm just I'm I'm thankful to be in this this uh, place of understanding. Um, as you know, I am a poet, and uh, I exactly. take the information that you all give me, mm -hmm. and I, I'm just giving it to this youth because I know that's my well, I know I know you get ready to bless us with something. Come on, this is a ritual too, so I need to hear something. <laughs> okay, let me give you this piece it's called Zombie Killer. All right. I walk amongst the land of the walking dead. See, the ones that only accept knowledge, westernized civilization, school-fed, man, they, eyes are gazed over, infected with a virus. I see deep into your soul, into the abyss of your pupils and your iris. Controlled by chemtrail gases, walking in masses, ready to see who wants to bite me the fastest I can recognize everyone, because I used to be one. Until I reverse my curse, and now I'll slay anyone who runs up on me, plotting on my demise. See, they like knowing thyself. The dead has arise. Can't understand that we're being misled, hanging on to every word that the government said. Man, call me zombie killer, the knowledge dealer. One dose of information can shock the body and be lethal like salmonella. Um, taking off heads of walking dead, but 
sometimes when I get scared, I have to pace my heartbeat real slow to the melodic rhythm of the mighty Congo, man. I'm a female gorilla. Don't make me kill you. But I will attack you with love and knowledge to heal your mind. And so dope is a famous quote, and it goes, I, I, I could have freed y'all all had y'all known that y'all were slaves. Red bone exterior, Harriet Tubman interior. See, we was taught over generations that we was inferior, but our bloodline read truth and DNA says superior. Zombie killer, mostly dressed in all black. It's not two texts in my backpack. It's two books and a map so I could navigate home like a Dogon. You see, once you study the tribe and you turn that word around, it reads, no God. But please, don't misconstrue my light skin, because if you scratch the surface, you will find the Zulu within I wear my hair and nine ether, and I'm not afraid either because I went from a grand diva to a supreme team believer. I'm so connected to the universe, my bones ache in a storm. Are those zombie killers? Are those zombie killers? Are those zombie killers, y'all? My heart remains warm. And that's that piece. That's it. Hello? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, you see, you don't get me. You see, you don't get me hype because I'm a poet too. So see, I'm getting ready to have to spit a little bars for you. You got to, you got to. Because that's just the type of night we got right now. All right. All right. So this one is called devolution. The promoter created mm-hmm. a source mentally shaped the universe. In the beginning, what's the word? And the word was um. With an explosive force, sun and moon and stars formed, gave birth to the heaven and earth. Once it sent its seraphims, now they sent its cherubims on the brink of insanity. Metaphysics state this world is nothing more than a fantasy, but in this flesh, yo, this shit is a mad reality. So real that niggas get ill from the mind-boggling stress they feel. Other niggas use their anger to kill. Many more just to pay the bills they bear, borrow, and steal. Yo, last week I was building with this cat about the Ten Commandments and the 42 Confessions of my yacht. Yo, he said, fuck that. Yo, my niggas are on the street coping with the daily pressures from the constant onslaught from the oppressor. What's this shit about becoming a vegetarian, seeking cosmic banners, learning um, self-discipline, and with our enemies make amends? Yo, mastering the science of breathing and the artistry of meditation. Nigga, please. I don't know what planet you from, but on Earth, yo, this shit is about money holes and rivals. I'm still going to street talk, pimp walk, eat pork, sleep fuck, shit work. I reply, nigga, is that your life purpose? Um, search beneath the surface and find that God dwells inside you and I. Do you want to ride or die? La, 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 la. Yo, you looking for that slice of American pie? And Jesus still come out the sky? Yo, it's all a lie. Yo, and here's why. The devil is the author of confusion. 183,000 divisions and religions, denominations, sex cults, schisms, and isms. Yo, isn't it written in your Bible that Jesus spoke in parables? The scriptures and gospels aren't just historical. Many passages weren't even meant to be taken literal. Most of it is allegorical based on esoterical principles. Baptist versus yeah. Methodist. Pentecostal holding his versus Jehovah Witness. Mormons versus Seventh-day Adventists. Skeptics, atheists, and agnostics. All divide and conquer tactics of the reptilian, lower fourth-dimensional aliens. So beware of the draconians and luciferians. Their aim is to imprison all true beings through ignorance. We must crush the head of Leviathan and battle... Um, mind control, subliminal suggestions, brainwashing, indoctrinations, using religion, politics, education, ecote- um, economics, health, and labor, entertainment and war, sex and law, and their chessboard game called Life Be All Been Pawns, puppets on strings controlled by demonic spawns. Some blaze trees, other dependencies. My peak get howled officially because they feel low in reality. Yo, some blaze trees, other dependency. My peeps get howled officially because they feel low in reality. God damn it, I said, some blaze trees, other sip Hennessy. My peeps get mm. howled officially because they feel low in reality. Yo, they're mm. all feeble attempts to escape their plights. Even without wings, our soul takes flight. Astral traveling at night through dark matter, making exodus from the mentor. Submerging into the light. Yo, knighted by the golden knight, by the golden king with the scepter of justice, melanin, cultivating chi energy until we are ethereal, brightly glow. Rightly becoming one with the righteous sun. So law, souls are raw. Magnificently glow 
with unconditional love, scattered rays from days from the heavens above, so below on on earth, the soul is trapped to the lowest depths of hell, incarcerated in 76 trillion cells to break free. We must feel, we must be refined, masculine and feminine properties combined, both hemispheres of the brain to shine. Caucasians are in search of the Holy Grail. In the middle of the brain sits the pineal, and around it are the 12 pair of cranial nerves. I E A R R O U. Serves to break the seven seals, read the snakes of Christ, teach the fruit from the tree of life. The one who is pregnant with evil will conceive trouble. The one give birth to disillusionment. Niggas need mental development. Up from the slavery. We never receive Willie Lynch psychiatric treatment or 40 acres in a mule for building this wicked government. The New World Order disorder, intense massive slaughter of the planet mm. population, 2.7 billion, according to the Global Report 2000. Three million black men and women are locked down in America's prison system. Across the nation, corporations are running and maintaining them. It's called privatization. Inmates will be used as cheap labor, paying 29 cents an hour, 100 million Africans have been inoculated with the AIDS virus and biochemical disease man-made at Fort Detrick, Maryland. It is caused by environmental toxins, animal byproducts, and late vaccinations. It is a germ warfare at its best. In the United States, there is 6 million homeless. Some are experimented on like guinea pigs and lab tests. Others, their body parts are being used in organ transplants. United Snakes, drug trafficking is estimated at $1 trillion. Like Marvin, it makes me want to throw up both hands and make me holler. You can't <laughs> run from your problems. You must find ways to solve them. And you're frightened and questioning. Many more are ignorant of the earth changes and our inhabitants are wasting valuable time babbling about money, jewelry, cars, and fashion. So don't let materialism and fears of egos leave your third eye froze. Mm. All right, so... Oh. Dope, We're going to get dope, it in with y'all tonight. Yes, yes. All right. Yes, yes, yes. Man, that that's an enlightening piece right there. That's that's heavy. That's that's for serious food for the spirit. Let me give you this piece right here. This one I came into consciousness. Girl, what happened to you? You know, ever since that Venus passing, June 6, 2012, you appear to have lost your damn mind. You talk about your awake, and then you started all that reading. Tasha, you need to put those books down and focus on Jesus. The black men, the black men or Moorish men who wrote those books, can you believe what they say? Because you don't say amen no more. You go around here saying, Ashe, and the twist. That silly little twist you wear, that's not even your style. You wouldn't change your name backwards from Tasha to Tasha Aset, Aset, like you some kind of queen of the now. Woo, child. Come on now. Don't you know what you're saying? Talking about our legacy was stolen and our people was forsaken. You see, Tasha, what's the deal with this conscious decision you make it? I remember. I remember you were so much more to me that I adored. Like that long two-tone weave you used to rock down to the floor. With those long red nails with gem encrusted around the tips. But now all you do is speak about blood diamonds from Congo and all that African stuff upon your lips. Girl, <laughs> you a trip. What happened to you? You talk about life as if we're modern-day slaves today. As if we buy homes and that they're easily taken away. As if we're allowed small riches and that they keep all the wealth. And then they destroy the truth and call the truth a lie itself. That they can set you up with all this good food to make you die. And then you got on the phone to call Shaniqua and told her ancient Egyptians were black. Come on. That's a lie. Girl, what happened to you? Don't you know, baby, that it's in your jeans, not in your jeans? Why are you going around here speaking about these mysterious things? Talking about we queens and space beings? Remember, the Bible is facing these things unseen, so don't look. Until we manifest our dreams, I think I know what you mean. 
<laughs> I know what you do. It's about me, you, and our babies, too. See, we must unite as people, and if melanin is the key, whatever happened to you, Tasha, whatever happened to you, Tasha, whatever happened to you, Tasha, is what I want to happen to me. Thank you. All right, no doubt, no yeah, doubt. Yeah, my song right now. I'm just, I'm enjoying this. But, yeah, I, I, I just been inspired, and um, it's like ever since that uh, Venus passing, June 6, 2012, man, I just, right. it just did something to me. And I just got to tell you okay. this story real quick. So I remember that week I went and bought this puppy, and, um, uh, you know, it was like a, everybody was running outside trying to get a glimpse at uh, Venus passing the sun, which you really can't see. So, you know, but it was just something to see because I think it was a like an eclipse, too, or something going on that day. But mm-hmm. I remember going into my house around 2 o'clock that afternoon, and the puppy that I had purchased, he kept staring in the windows like he was hypnotized or mesmerized by something. So he kept staring and staring. And I was like, you know, he just was froze for like about 20 minutes. And I, I thought it was kind of funny. I was taking pictures and I said, okay, something going on here. So then um, my husband, he, you know, was sitting there and the puppy just jumped into his lap. And so, you know, the dog, he, you know, he, he really likes me. He loves me. And I went over to try to pick him up. He kind of snapped at me like he didn't want to, come to me because he was afraid of something or it just, he, something was going on with him. So my husband, he just, the the dog sat in his lap for about three hours. So finally, you know, my, my husband, like, put the goddamn dog down. <laughs> so right. put the dog down. The dog ran into the corner and just stayed in that corner for 24 hours during that event. And after mm-hmm. that event, it's like my life never was the same. I just felt more empowered, uh, like I could, I could, uh, see things that wasn't there. I was writing poetry in the middle of the night, and I had to wake up and actually say, hmm, what do, what do these things mean that I'm writing? You know, so I was, like, waking up and, you know, trying to find out these things. Like, I, I never knew about Lakshmi or Kali or any of that kind of things, but I think that right. energy is what entered into my house. So it took me two years to say, ah, that's what that was. So um, can you give me a little more insight about Lakshmi and Kali being the same thing, and what what is that about? All right, well, they're just variants of each other, just like Mayat is a variance of our set. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, actually, all of them is one and the same. Okay, just different yeah. culture but and different language for the same deity, right, which is the mother goddess principle, which is actually nothing more than the Kundalini itself. The Kundalini is the woman of beauty, in which is Lashmi. And also she's called the destroyer, if not raised mm-hmm. properly. And also she destroys karma, so it has mm. Kali. Mm. So the Kundalini in which that um, the people are really referring to, the internal mother um, principle within each and every one of us, which is at the base of the spine as it, and as she comes up, um, she shows and reveals herself to you um, by way of dreams. Um, but um, she's done that to me on several occasions. And she would show me that, okay, I'm ready to ascend to the next level. So she would come in a dream. Each chakra, she would tell me that she's getting ready to um, ascend. So either I'm looking at airplanes taking off, or either I'm walking upstairs or going upstairs, you know, whatever the case is, or that symbolizes ascension. So whenever you see stairs, um, pay attention to who is leading you, or who is there um, at the um, at the stairway, because wow. oftentimes it is, um, oftentimes it is Lakshmi, which is um, the mother principle, which is um, the Kundalini. Oh wow! Yeah, that that's mind blowing right there. Cause uh, yeah, I, I, after that, I, I it, it, that's a key that I needed because I was like, what is you know? I was trying to find out what's going on, even though I was, I was still about it because I was like, man, things are being revealed to me, and I was just excited, like, what's happening, you know? But uh, mm-hmm. I had to just kind of sit back and be patient and just let nature show me. You know, I always have dreams about flying and, like, birds pl- pl- mm-hmm. flying past okay. my face. Okay, well, flying, that symbolizes um, out-of-body experience, also symbolizes that ascension that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. 
the one thing you did say, pay attention to nature, that is so real because, like, beagles will come right, you know, to me all the time, and I'm like, wow, my right. vibration is high right now. You know, I understand that. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's just walking this life and then just having that understanding, and it's just, it's just peace, and I wouldn't trade it for nothing. And I'm just, it's like I, I just, I'm just hungry for more and more and more, and I just can't stop right now. Right, no doubt. But, and also, like, what, what's going on with this Chicago thing? I'm a Chicago native, and I know Chicago is a really powerful city, right? And I know mm-hmm. that there's a war going on for, uh, you know, our children, but it, it, I, I'm just really feeling something else deeper is going on there. I know they're trying to bring the militia in, and, that, you know, I, I feel that the police are going around and they're trying to invoke fear in people so we can have fear. You know, fear is uh-huh. the enemy of melanin. So exactly. I, I see these beatings and, and, and all this kind of stuff going on, but I'm like, what are they really, like, what's going on? I mean, they're just trying to prepare for war because I know they know that the spirit is just getting stronger and stronger. They, they, they're they trying to fight something on the flesh level because they know we're growing stronger. But I feel that if they keep putting this fear out, Especially for this new young generation, they're they're trying to they're trying to like rob them of something, like break. Right. Them. Well, you know what? For those who know and who are from Chicago, and those who um, understand what is taking place in Chicago, only thing you have to do is just call upon the founder of Chicago, John ba- uh, Le Baptiste, uh, who founded um, Chicago, who was a brother, and mm-hmm. just call upon that energy in order to um, clear things up. Um, how we know this work is because there was um, several Qigong masters, pranic healers, as well as also Reiki um, master teachers um, from out of the Baltimore, D.C. area. And they went to the chief of police and told him, said, look, we can um, decrease, um, you know, crime activity, you know, by 2%, mm. you know. And so they allow for this program to continue on. Well, guess what? Um, when they found out that it actually dropped more than 23% and was steady dropping, they was like, oh, mm. we have to stop this program. Mm-hmm. You know? So the thing is that you don't even have to come as, um, as you know, propositioning them because they're not going to appreciate it because they want um, the jails to be filled. They want the death. They want the mayhem. Mm-hmm. Um, so the thing is, is that for those you know, um, who are from Chicago, who understands this information. Um, you just bring all that information, to, you know, everybody together, and y'all do, um, you know, y'all send energy and beam the energy on those who have the like minds there in order to up the ante on, um, you know, doing what's right. Right. You know? And within a matter of weeks, watch the whole situation change. Mm. Mm. And how you know it is because it's the same thing which they, um, they call the 99 monkey theory. If one yeah. monkey um, cracks a nut a new way, then all of a sudden all the damn monkeys, all the other monkeys um, know how to do the same damn thing all of a sudden. Wow. Hmm. It's the same thing with us. If we take this shit to the fifth dimension, you know, dealing with the science of light, man, we can um, clear up so much shit until it's just ridiculous. No doubt. Um, you know, because that goes back to what I was, um, I don't know if you was on here earlier on when I was talking about um, light and, and um, you know, reading a little articles about the light and how melanin has the way of being able to eat light and how by eating that light you were able to um, have that energy within you, stored up within you in order to produce some type of experience or perception in which that you want to have. In other words, this is not something in which that you have to wait for. So it's the same thing. You can always transmit positive energy to anything in which that is negatively going on upon the globe. You know, wow. um, we used to do it all the time when it was coming, um, when we were dealing with the harp system. When we started hearing about the harp system, um, I remember being in um, Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, me and Bobby Hemmett was, you know, um, he was breaking it down and me and him was building on it. And this was like back in 95, 96. You know, we um, started talking about the chemtrails and the um, harp and how they was all connected. We knew all of that back in 95, 96. Mm-hmm. And so, um, shoot, we started getting together a group of, um, you know, highly gifted individuals, 
you know, who practiced magic, did rituals, and did ceremonies. And we all got together and we started um, bombarding the harp system mm. and busting up and busting up, you know, um, the chemtrails. And the mm. same thing, you know, can be done, you know, by anyone, you know, or any group, you know. So it's just about, you know, taking it to that level, you know, using our magic. Yeah, it's it, uh, it, it, it's strange you said that because I was talking to my uh, my study partners and my my people I kind of study with. I call it my tribe. We get together and uh, we do right. our like uh, we get together. We talk about what's going on. But I'm I'm telling them like it's time to step it up. We need to use our magic. You know, I remember uh, being a child in Chicago. My grandmother every week she hit the daily three. Right. You know what I mean? My brother made big money from the Daily Three and Horses. But out here in California, I can't hit a damn number. You know, and I, I have the same intuitive power as my grandmother had, but I, I'm like, what's right. going on? It's something out here. You know, they always have chemtrails going on out here. Uh, but right. my grandmother, every week she used to hit play and just, like, hit the Daily Three. She'll have a dream, call my auntie, my mom, and all of them have mm-hmm. money. But out here... Right. I, you can't get it, and I'm like, it's just something about out here in California that they doing. I mean, it's just something that they doing all over. But in Chicago, that was a place the energy was so high and mixed with the melanin. I mean, my grandmother, she always hit. Now we can't get nothing. <laughs> well, that's because but, uh, you know, know, I'm telling you right now, we need to get Hollywood, together and start you know, working this. We need to sit down and meditate mm-hmm. and zone out and, and and call upon our energies and our ancestors. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, um, Hollywood is highly ritualized, you know, with ceremonies. Yes, it is. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, you, it's going to um, take a lot to um, break through um, that negativity um, out there. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody want to be something something else, you know, and they right. live to that. Their goal is to get to Hollywood to become something. I mean, they're really caught up in this illusion out here. But yeah. the conscious community out here is growing, and these youngsters are, like, really – Stepping it up right now, so I, you know, big ups to them. I mean, they really kind of waking up, you right. know. Well, Hollywood up the, the older well. people, they kind of lost. Like the older ones, I'm like, man, they messed it up for a lot of these. Uh, you know, they they messed up some times. They just the seriously thing, right. messed big up time. a lot of things. <laughs> right, right. Hold on, guys. I'm going to go back to the line and bring um, some others on here. You know, mm-hmm. and we're going to have a little round table. Hold on. Oh. Area code five one two. Area code five one two. You on the line? Peace, brother Lee. <laughs> peace, 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 Mike. What's up with you? Peace. Wow. Um. Uh, peace. Um. Peace to the goddess there. Um. I was saying. I was listening. And I just saw you getting into the whole poetry thing, and then I knew I had to come in. But then I I heard, I heard your little verse or long verse or whatever that was and then I was like wow you know because I haven't I haven't heard you in a while you know so it was just like that that should be put on a pedestal right there that needs to be on an album that's yeah <laughs> that speaks of everything that uh that I'm pissed off about. Right. Uh, well, I'm not pissed off right now, but I'm just saying, as far as mean. like existentially, yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, no, everything, everything has been um, going good. Um, you, you said you sent the certificates out. No, we haven't done it yet. We get ready to do it before we um, hopefully go to New York. So, yo. Oh, okay. All right, well, that's um, that's great. Um, I was wondering, did you want me to do a little something? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, go can ahead. Do Hit it up. Go ahead. Hit it up, yeah, bro. Okay. Yeah, that's the round table. Hit yeah. it up. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Let's check it. I said I would hit it and stay in it. That's the whole goal, to reach the consciousness that's infinite. People with the minds too rigid don't understand that even the Greeks got the information from ancient Kemet. They said, I came in this life to be a shaman, leaving men in an office the word ramen. 
Oh, I've been in the pot. It was melting. I guess that's what they call raw, man. I guess we got to step it up to change the game. But it doesn't even matter because a lot of these dudes is lame. Just talking about money, hoes, and clothes and blunt smoke going out the nose, but it doesn't even matter. It's just more and more woes. So we need to step it up in the consciousness. We utilize the five senses, pranta, non-stuff, going and opening up each of the chakras. Because every ram is a mantra or a mudra. Don't be a loser. Or when you lose, you see me, but I awaken the kundalini and I'm charging your cerebral spinal fluid because I'll be the final druid before I pass it on and then I'm gone. I'm a star person, hardworking. <laughs> Doesn't even matter. They start getting nervous whenever I bring the truth to the surface. And everybody got a divine life's purpose, so nobody can ever tell you that you're worthless. So I'm flipping and skipping and hitting MDCs with the funky rhythm. Doesn't even matter. Too quick to hit them. I told you I'm an MC or a master of ceremony. But that even goes back to the rituals. The subliminal individual bringing the wisdom because I'd be one of the children and the indigo who's now an adult but used to revolt to adults because I didn't, because they tried to keep me away from the occult. Ooh, I don't even know what to say after that. But yo, my name is Matt. <laughs> all right, all right. Very nice. That was dope, Matt. That was nice. All right, I'll stand. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. So right, we getting ready to break on the other callers right quick. Hold on, okay. we're going to um, continue the roundhouse discussion, okay. round table. Hold on, we got area code 202, area code 202, you're on the line. Peace, brother. Islam, brother, Peace. Bay. This is Richard. Uh, this is Peace. Richard Barrow of Day. Peace. Hi, thank you. Uh, I have a, I actually have a couple things. I've been a really big fan of everybody's uh Brother, and uh, just really enjoying all the all the knowledge you uh, spit, and I really appreciate it. Anyway, I just wanted to uh, ask: having having knowledge of proper person, trust law, constitutional principles, and meta and a metaphysical understanding of things, I'm starting to realize that they all go hand in hand. Now, exactly. knowing all these things, knowing all these things. You can apply them in the in the in the in the physical world. Now, mm-hmm. using uh, I've been using candle magic for for the last I guess month. Oh, watching some of your videos and Brother Panics, and of course Bobby. But uh, I've been trying to figure out. The candle magic can be used for, of course, empowerment, but. Which candles exactly can really bring the most bang? I know you might have mentioned this, but I'm sorry. Mhm. I'm sorry. Did you what cut that off? Last you said? I don't know. Did he? Oh no, I'm saying. I'm still here. Okay. Yeah. I'm using uh, the best way. Using the can- <laughs> uh, uh, the big, uh, like the biggest. The biggest thing, I guess, is the. I meant to say the biggest bang. I guess not that. That's not the really. That's not oh, the best way gold, to put it. Gold candle, brother. Gold candle. Gold candles. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now I've been going through my dreams. I've been going through my dreams, and I've been recalling certain images, but I've been applying them to the real world, and then. And, Knowing this knowledge, that's a pretty good uh, spiritual significance, don't you think? I mean, that's, I mean, I mean, it's pretty good. Yeah, right, right, yeah. right. Mhm. Yeah. Okay. So I am on the right track. I am. A, I'm, I'm pretty much doing what I'm supposed to. <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. we all have like, that. Like we said, that's 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 a beginner thing. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is about the working it the best that you can. And how you do that is with yeah. the power of the mind. So uh, once you have yeah. your mind um, and focus, you know, because that's the thing. You know, it has to be focused. More focus, okay. Right. And All that's right. the key is, get, is being able to focus and lower your breath 
so that you can transmit the proper Through the breath techniques, yeah. Um, right, to your altar, you know, so that the ancestors can work off that energy. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, so go, okay. I appreciate it. It's actually my first time calling in anywhere, and it's actually um, it's a place, it, it's an honor and a pleasure. Oh, no doubt. Same here, brother. Okay. appreciate you calling in. Same here, God. Islam, peace. Islam. 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 All right, we got area code 803, area code 803 on the line. Greetings. Peace. Peace. Area code 803. Peace. Peace. Peace, God. All right. I'm going to go to Eric Cole 740. Eric Cole 740, you're on the line. Hello, how you doing, sir? Peace and blessings. Good, good. How are you, brother? I'm, I'm fine. Great, Thank brother. you for having me on. Uh, I, I got a couple of quick questions, and I'll, I'll, I'll take my answer off. Uh, about, could, could you explain the fifth dimension to us? And when do we come into the fifth dimension? Second, why does it feel like time is going faster, and is that why they took us from uh, analog to digital so, that, so they can control time to keep us to see. And thirdly, uh, why does it seem like the boom is much bigger than it used to be? Thank you. Okay. Um, the reason why um, time is um, being sped up, if you go to uh, Matthew, the 24 chapter, it speaks about that for the elite sake, time will be um, sped up. Um, what that really means is that um, when you read the books by Val Valerian, uh, Matrix 1, 2, and 3, he speaks about the fact that as we approach 2012, we would be approximately like 16 hours in a day out of 24 as compared to 24 hours hours in the actual day it would be actually like 16. Um, we noticed that that is actually what is happening as we um, reached into what is called the photon belt, all right, which um, we went through the dark wrist. <coughs> and we are now coming out on the other side of the photon belt, all right. Um, all of these things are occurring along with the Grand Cross, um, along with the Cardinal Cross, along with um, various other astrological things on which that is taking place. Um, before 2012, we talking about um, the Grand Cross, the first one, which um, dealt with um, 1999, August of 1999, to November um, 2008, um, as well as also um, the Grand Cross, on which that we just experienced a few months ago. Um the Cardinal Grand Cross. So all these things astrologically are taking place um, prior to and right after 2012. Um, based on the OMAC calendar, we understand that um, we have gone into a new age. We have left the age of Pisces and have entered into the age of um, what we refer to as, um, well, the age of Hebrew, which is the age of knowing or the age of truth, um, which is the age of Aquarius which if you go to Luke 22.10, it states um, Jesus was asked by the disciples, well, how will we know about the last days? He said, follow the man with the pitcher of water into his house. The pitcher of water symbolizes, of course, the water bearer, mm-hmm. which is the symbol of Aquarius. Yeah. Um, we understand that's what also is going on. Excuse me, and that's Luke 10.22. Um, and so we understand that's what's going on. Um, then we also have the fact of... Um, Metaphysically, when you talk about the different dimensions, like, for example, the third dimension is length, width, and height. When you add time and space to it, which is depth, then it becomes the fourth dimension. And then when you add light to that, it becomes the fifth dimension. When you add gravity to that, it becomes the sixth dimension, and on and on and on. All right? But the fifth dimension is light itself. And so this is why now we have more light workers um, those who are coming from out of the darkness into the light, as we would say. And so Reiki, Pranic Healing, Qigong, Tai Chi, um, Kutalini, Tantra, um, um, Kriya Yoga, all these things are now coming to the forefront, which is called energy modality. So now people are working more with 
um, light. Hence, they have gone into a fifth-dimensional consciousness. All right? Not saying that there aren't higher consciousness, because I just made mention of one, which is the sixth dimension, which is dealing with gravity. But there's many consciousness. As a matter of fact, in hyperdimensional physics, they have found 27 different states of consciousness. Mm. Okay? Mm. So, um, yes. we not even dealing with all of them, you know what I'm saying? Even though all 27 are here simultaneously, um, is based on Ori, the mind in which that puts you within that particular realm or aspect or density level of that particular um for that particular dimension. So for those who want to remain being a third dimensional person, you know, then they will, you know, suffer horrors of a third dimensional reality. They will suffer um, sickness and, you know, and ailments and those types of things as we're moving away from the third into the fourth, going into the fifth dimension, which the indigenous people refer to as the fifth world. Um, if you go to Australia amongst the Aborigines, they refer to it as such. If you go to Africa, they refer to such. Here within the um, um, so-called Native American cultures, they um, they say it as such. They call it the fifth world. So we are moved into the fifth world, um, which is fifth dimension, which is based on the science of light. Um, so that's what's going on, and basically in, a, in its totality from from everything which that I re- I remember um, you asking. <coughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, now I can. Uh, have have you have you started to experience some of the things, some of the effects of of the fifth dimension? And oh, the yeah, reason definitely. why I ask that is because oh, yeah. I think I'm experiencing yeah. some things that I haven't experienced before. Like I heard the sister earlier talking about, I have dreams of flying. Sometimes I can. Right. I can I can sit and think about let's say maybe uh she's from California, I'm from California, but I no longer live here, but sometime I I mentally try to visit my peoples over there by sitting down and meditating and, and visualizing me walking to their front door and knocking and maybe the next day I would receive a call or something of that nature. So you know, I'm starting to see things like that or maybe just brief glimpses of things that maybe that will happen, whether it's a minute before, you know, let's say I have a vision of something right now in a couple of minutes of the same day that might possibly happen. Yeah. So I don't know if those are, are elements of the beginning of the fifth dimension. I know that there was a song. It was it was all it was awful funny that the group Fifth Dimensions, which was a black group who sung right. about Marilyn the age McCool. of Aquarius right. and the mm-hmm. words that were in it were so powerful. Yeah, the age of Aquarius. About, yeah mm-hmm. crystal clear revelations, this, that, and the other. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Yes, I, I see them also. Uh, I see the, uh-huh. uh, the Fifth Dimension coming into place. Uh, more truth is coming to the light. When you see more truth coming to the light, you know that's synonymous with the fifth dimension, also with the Aquarian age. But the fifth dimension, uh, what's the song? The, new age, song, of the, the age of Aquarius. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, I see it. I see it also. You know, I'm, able, I'm able to deal with uh, the the police and the courts more better than I ever had been now, but because I'm I'm speaking out more truth. And with knowledge and wisdom behind it. You know, we said, and, Brother L, you had your feds on. And, yeah. yeah. They were like, take it off. And you're like, it's, it's not a hat, it's a fez. Yes, it's a religious uh, headdress. And uh, the police and the, the uh, security in there, they back they back down. They back down. <laughs> you know, so, uh, yes, it well, is something to. Yeah, uh, you know, you know, with something that, that, that I, I don't know if has anybody ever read the book of Jonah? Probably a lean. I, I probably I have a bit. Yeah, you know, when I when I read the book of Jonah, Jonah in that particular story, to me, in symbolism, is a transition from 
the the Pisces age into the Aquarius age, where where there was a Hebrew man who was inside the fish, and because of his disobedience, mm-hmm. and then once he prayed and understood his sin, he was spit into the water, mm-hmm. which which to me symbolizes the Aquarius age of, mm-hmm. of freedom. And, you know, during that whole time of, 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 of being enslaved, you look at the the emblems of Christianity, there's a fish, you know, you see on the back of people cars. Right, so I right. kind of see it as though all this time we have been inside that fish, and now that fish is <laughs> has finally spit us out because it can no longer hold us. No, the python is gone. Water. Mm-hmm. Yes, yep. it's gone. Right. And the, the, the Python age was the mm-hmm. the uh, ring of artist. Christianity. Right. Well, the story of Jonah too is the sun as it travels through the well called Cetus. When you look astrologically, um, yeah, Cetus is so C E T U S, which sits directly behind Pisces and right next to Aquarius. Um, and as the sun moves um, from out of Pisces, it goes into the mouth of um, the well, as we say, the sun gets swallowed up in the mouth of the well, hence Jonah in the well. And then, as you said, as it's being spit out, you know, mm-hmm. it moves into, um, as we say, Aquarius. So mm-hmm. all that which we're talking about is the rendition in which that it takes place astrologically, you know. And, you know, and so hence, yes, the fish being that it's right there next to the well, being right there next to um, Aquarius, all of that is seen as the interplay. Um, like you said, Christians take that symbol, which is the fish, which is the Piscean, the last age in the we just left out of, and put, and put it on the back of their car. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Don't that look fishy? Yeah, you know, and and you, know, I look at that symbolism too. Is is how we got here to America. You know, we didn't come over by free right. choice. You know, we came over in not on top of the ship, but we came in the belly of the ship. You know, right. and then it all, you know, it, 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 you know, but I look at it, I say, wow, we came in the belly of the ship, but we're going to leave on the wings of an eagle. <laughs> right. Right. Well. Right. Well, some of, well, no a lot of us was already here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the very, the very, right. the very eagles that that we have been in is <laughs> we're gonna leave on that same eagle to go home where, wherever the home right. is right. at. Right. Right. Well, hold on, yeah. we'll bring in another caller nine one zero. Queen the shoe, come on in. Please, yes, it's me. I figured I'd join the cipher. All right, goddess. Um, <laughs> um, the goddess was online, and I hope she's still here because I know she was talking about adding on in her area. Um, the young children um, in on the west coast are waking up, and we have to um, thank Brother Sabir Bay for that because he out there making it happen. Brother A. a. Rashid, he out there too, and we always get a lot of YouTube hits where people are asking, you know, where is the energy? To recharge at over there You know so those are some two good Sources um, But definitely go where your um, spirit leads you um, But hitting the number <laughs> um, That's a good vibe And when you when you do hit it Then you know that you're on point So God is, I, we definitely suggest Tai Chi Chi Gong and just doing the rituals With your people you know That's really really powerful That's good that you have a cipher that you can grow with Because we have a cipher here that we it's just really a great thing. It really is. Mm-hmm. No doubt it is. Well, and, uh, right. Also, do you got any um, any uh, commercials? As a matter of fact, let me get oh, one yeah. in right quick. Oh, yeah, I always quick. got a commercial got, ride. Yeah, let me get one in because um, Mike, um, Michael Brown, um, he's a constructionist. Um, he does carpentry work and also asphalt as well as also, um, which is pavement, um, concrete work, 
and he is available, and you can actually reach him by 910-364-9099. For anyone who needs any work done, um, he will actually travel, all right? So not only will he um, be here in North Carolina, but he will travel to South Carolina, Virginia, wherever. Um, he said as high as even New York, all right? So anyone out there that needs some work done, um, you know, um, Michael Brown is very reasonable, um, he won't hurt your pockets, so check them out. Um, Queen, go ahead. You're absolutely right, God, I'm, and I'm grateful that he's on the team. That was a beautiful shout-out. Um, also, too, we're going to begin to have um, sports personalities on, um, I believe it was Thursdays, Mondays, and I can't remember, but I know it's in the works. So we definitely want to get your thoughts on that. We can't wait to see that begin to manifest. It's so important to not only – for lack of a better term, which y'all know what I'm talking about, preach to the choir. We also want to start activating and um, being able to answer questions and bringing exposure to people who wouldn't normally even vibe this vibe. They would just go to the game. They just want to talk about basketball, you know, that type of thing. You know, you Mm -hmm. want to start reaching those people, too, and getting them to be stimulated mentally. Because when we all activate, it pulls the sun closer, and we also begin to, you know, do phenomenal things, you know, like, Psychic abilities. The sister was talking about that with the number. It helps you to make um, sound decisions. You can super bionically hear things, um, see things. You begin to um, recognize and appreciate your ancestors that are around you, that are here to protect you. You know, so it's just really, really good when we become activated. And it changes the world, you know, for. Um, Another commercial is definitely go to the website. We are constantly adding on. We do appreciate um, constructive criticism or just lovingly criticism. Um, The website is Dr. Alim Elbe. That's D-R-A-L-I-M-E-L-B-E-Y dot com. And then you can also email us at Dr. Alim Elbe at Gmail. Again, um, that's Dr. Alim Elbe. Dot com, and we we have a lot of the candles that Dr. Aileen was talking about on today. Um, I was listening to one of the goddesses. She was stating that ours are superior, which is true. We get the best quality, and and we um we make sure that you know it um it gets out to you quickly. We love our shipping process because y'all are very important to us. We drop everything because we build in in order to get y'all y'all stuff because we appreciate. Y'all digging in your pockets for us, so we answer the phone too. <laughs> All right. Phone in to us, we answer him. Um, now, brother, um, now, brother, Walter and L, I know you wanted to say something, so please, please say something. Uh, I was, uh, I was just saying, all right, you know. Um, like I said, I was gonna get those uh three books that Eileen is currently writing right now. So once you get them published, or uh, I will, I will purchase the, them from y'all. Well, thank you no so doubt. much. You are definitely well. We'll be gonna have you real soon too. Yep. Okay. And also, brother L, you are key. You are key. Um, key in this team too. And I just want to say today, I appreciate you. You know, you be your oh, faithful. Appreciate you, goddess. Sincerely. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate it of you. Yeah, we do too. We appreciate and love you too, God. Love you all too. No doubt. Oh yeah, um, you've been getting a lot of comments too, brother. Um, L. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. People I'm glad to hear that. Join you on the show. Um, adding, you know, adding on to the information. Oh, glad to hear that. That's a great mm-hmm. feature of them also. Yes. Uh, I'm very uh, glad to hear that, and that I'm really contributing <laughs> to the cause and to uh, 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 to the uh, the rising of the. Uh, Follow humanity to the more divine oh, yeah. national movement. Mm-hmm. Also, too, family, we just added the metaphysical breakdown of little things like, um, like if you cut your finger, you know, whichever finger it is, it'll break down exactly what the spirit is trying to tell you. You know, um, just it's just go check it out. Let us know if it's too long. <laughs> we need to take it off. But it's just information that we definitely wanted to expose you to, you know. Um, 
um, what the breakdown of cancer means. It's like something that's eating at you. Or if you cough, um, you want to be able to speak your word. You feel like you, you're not being heard. You know, um, bedwetting, you know, fear of um, – so it's like it breaks down – What's going on, you know, in your life so that it could be corrected before it manifests a physical ailment. So we just added that, and I wanted to make sure y'all know. Um, also, check out the blog of Enlightenment. We also add on there about current events and different ways you can protect yourself from psychic attacks, you know. So it's, it's okay. in writing for everyone who's visual. Yeah, but Brother Michael, please add on. Oh, peace, peace. Um, I would say, um, well, it's interesting that Aleem put the thing about the eyes and the goji berry because that's what I've been doing most of these weeks is do my best to get uh, my eyes, <laughs> my eyesight back, uh, you know, because I don't want to be like the blind kung fu master, you know. <laughs> but like, yeah, I mean, um, I love the I love the website. Um, it's it's definitely a, a great work. I mean, it helps so many people, and I don't know. I mean, I only have good things to say about you know the website. You know, and well, I thank I mean, you, I God. Think- a lot a lot of people do <laughs> love it, and I just appreciate y'all too. And um, just real quickly, if you want a website too, then holla at us because. We can help you get a domain name that's um, discounted, and then we also can help you get a website. And unless you have videos on it, it'll be free. But why? what's wrong with your eyesight, I think I Michael? need a website. Okay, we'll help you with that. Back to Brother, your eyesight, can, what's can going you, on? Can you, can you guys hear me? Yeah. 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 Loud and clear. Uh, speaking of eyesight, I, I got a little exercise I do. Uh, I don't know if it will work for you, but I know that I've seen – a few results for me. You know how we, the eye muscles are like, uh, you know, when we go to the gym, if we begin to work our muscles, if you, if you close your eyes and start rolling your eyes inside your, your sockets, what you do, you will work your eye muscles. And I believe, I could be wrong, that you get a lot better circulation and activity going to them, mm. and they will get stronger. Uh this is what I have experienced. So, you know, you might want to try it. Is, is this the Michael that's on the COVID show? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If if you if you try that and you give it a couple of weeks, and uh, you know, uh, let me know when we come back on the show again here. I would appreciate. Oh yeah. It. Yeah. I mean, I've been doing that. I mean, it's like eye yoga, but that really that really does help. Um, yeah, I appreciate that. That's that's why I told the brother panic. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll get on the goji berry song. <laughs> that's deep because Aileen wrote a blog of enlightenment on eye exercises. Yep, so y'all that's check that out, too, because it, it gives it's a funny breakdown. Because, it's funny because, like, we were on the same le- wavelength, like, as soon as, as soon as I told that to Liam, like pretty shortly after, he wrote that whole thing about the eyes, and I was like, "Yes." <laughs> you know what? We inspire each other. You know, so well, that's beautiful. It is. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm really glad that Sabir is out on the West Coast. Uh, here, I, 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 this first, this is my first time hearing that. It's, He's been out on the West Coast and enlightened the uh, sisters and brothers out there, him and Brother A.A. A. Rashid. And uh, uh, I hope they're listening, but I com- uh, commend them both on the great work that they're doing out on the West Coast. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's everywhere. Yes. We need it in Texas, bad. Drug. Texas, what now? We need it here. I mean, in you Texas, gotta bring I mean, it then, Mike. You gotta bring it. I feel like I'm the one. Like I'm like Merlin, and there's there's very there's very few. So it's like I um I okay. do my best though. 
I gotta yeah. keep but it we do know right. some ciphers in Texas, though. We do know some ciphers in like Dallas and um, Plano, Texas. They're demonstrating, mm. so it's definitely people out there. I know one brother who's one brother who's riding on the plates with no problem. He's like adding on. I'm like, okay, God, do it. <laughs> Actually, do it, I met at know? the Qigong place. Um, this one brother, he goes by KG. He actually, he's an MC, but he actually does it live. Like, he he does, I mean, he does the real thing more so me. Like, I just make music, but, I mean, he actually performs, and he actually lives real close to me. So I was really happy um, to meet him because he he's really into the metaphysics and things. So um, I was really happy about that because there's very few people that into the metaphysics, um, at least where I live, very conservative area, you know, so. But I still, I still do my Qigong out there, even though I, I, I have to walk around. You you know, I go to my, go to the park to do some Qigong, and there's a huge Jehovah Witness circle or something. I'm like, uh, this is not the place. <laughs> right. No, but for real, right. for real, um, Jehovah's Witnesses, they've been waking up, God. Matter of fact, Glad we got two calls this week about, you know, people who were in Jehovah's Witness heavy, you know. But because they recognized that they um that their questions wasn't being answered, they was able to stimulate into a higher mentality. So um, keep doing your Qigongin, because Texas is huge. Oh, it's people out there. <laughs> you haven't run into them yet. I'm happy about that. <laughs> I got it, yeah. I keep doing it. I mean, they just, you know, see, see, they see me out there, you know. You have no idea what you're doing either. You're probably waking somebody up, you know, because you know you conjure an injury. You know, right. and you know yeah. you're activating and making yourself more sensitive. So if that's the only thing that's working, that's beautiful. But you right. definitely yeah. are raising the vibration over there. Yeah, I didn't know I was Ooh. doing that good to the system of God. Told me. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we out each there. have something new to bring, something, you know. So that's, you know, that's that's a great thing about it because we all contribute to the whole. Exactly. No doubt we all do, and that's the special thing about this. All right, let's go to the phone line. We got area code 862. Area code 862, you on the line. Peace, peace, peace. Hi. Peace. peace, goddess. Hello. Peace, everybody. This is so beautiful. I'm really, I, um, I didn't get the first hour, but, you know, it's all aligned, divine timing and everything, and, I was listening to what you were talking about, candles, and and I just, like, I, I think there's somebody was asking about the fifth dimension or whatnot, or I don't even know. I think it was the fifth or something, but, um, yeah, like, that's, I was going to say, like, you really, I, there's something that happened, like, many years ago, in 2010 or whatever, and, like, I, it was after the earthquake in Haiti, actually. Like, I felt it before it happened and everything, and I just felt so hopeless. And I'm like, well, why did I know this? It's like I felt hopeless knowing stuff that was going on that I couldn't do anything about. And I just broke down. Like, my heart just broke. And, like, I just asked, you know, to show me, like, what I needed to know. I, I, I was ready to know. And I was just almost, like, overdosing on, like, reading and and, like, you know, I was reading, like, here, and I was just staring at the letters, and I saw how they were just flames. They are all flames. And, they're like, you know what I'm saying? They are rising in flames, and I was drawing, like, pictures of triangles and stuff, you know, and I put two triangles together and made a diamond, and then I put, and then I put them together and made a star. And then I was like, oh, my goodness. Like, then it was, like, the symbology of life or, you know, and it was like I was seeing it, you know? And just listening to that uh, Nas and Damian Marley album, like, that whole weekend, you know? Just, like, smoked a bunch of buns and shit on my wall and saw everything. <laughs> and, oh, that's a great album. And then I saw it with the... I'm sorry? No, I was saying that's a great album. Yeah, that was, like, that was, like... I even looked at my letter afterwards. I'm like, are going to be ready for this? I don't even know. Like, it was just, like... It was, it's, like, um... It's, 
like this preparation. It's like it's, it's really like something from the ancestors, like everything. And um, and then I remember like I was reading and reading, and it was like that voice, like, "No, you must go do your overdose your knowledge." Like I didn't know what to do with myself, you know, because I just couldn't stop. And I was like up for days, and I was just like I needed to like, you know, just rest my brain. And it's like you need to go and do what you're learning, you know. Anyway, so I decided to chill, and I, you know, uh, you know, smoked a bowl or whatever. And then my lighter went out, so I lit a candle, and then I was just staring at the candle, and I saw how like the blue was on the bottom, and the um, orange was on top, and like all blue is water, and that's on the bottom, and I, you know, and I started seeing that, and I saw how the flame felt almost like female and B and male, like that's yin and yang. Like Wu and Tang, Dr. Lee. <laughs> um, they, and, and you know what I'm saying? Like it was like uniting the dualities or polarities, you know, like being a full circle is empty and full at the same time. And it was just like things started happening and I started like decoding all these words and it was just started, and I was, like, copying the stuff that I was writing over, like, re-editing it because I didn't have a computer or whatever, so I started, like, pulling out, like, the copies and just reading the originals, and I threw it all in a pile, and I didn't even know that I was doing a ritual. Like, I can't really explain what was what was going on, but it was, like, out of love. It was all out of love. Like, I, I just, like, was so tired of all the suffering in the world, and you know what I'm saying? And I wanted to know, like, what I needed to know and what show me what I needed to do and you just and things like and that week like three like of my vases broke like shattered in half but it didn't even I didn't even know like how it happened but there are all these like unexplainable you know things that are happening so that's you know and I anyway but I hope I'm making sense right now it's really hard to convey this but it's basically I was shown so much I was shown like I was even shown, like, like the whole creation thing, like, there's so much light in the vessel, and it exploded, and then when all the little shattered pieces of glass fell, those are, that's the DNA. Each shattered piece of glass is a different, you know, a different shape, and that's, a, you know, that's the DNA. And a lot fell, fell really fast, but the ones who were, who touched the bottom at the end had the most light, and that's, that's us, you know what I'm saying? So, like, it's really, um, that's what I was shown, too. You know. Um, that's that's really cool. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it really was, and I, and I felt, I could feel, you know, my grandma, my my grandma, she lost her eyesight at um, 23. Okay. Oh. And, and by the way, like, her last name is literally Fish Bean, like like the Pokemon, like F I S H B E I N. Yes. That, that, and grandma. Wow. Um, grandma would like, you know, have to hold on to my arm and I would walk with her and everything like that. She didn't have a cane or, or a dog or anything like that. She was like totally like as sharp as attacking independent and like she just held on to her arms when we took her out and I felt her. I I like the veil lifted. I could feel like the presence of of everybody and I was like, Is everybody okay? And I saw, you know, was just checking up with who like you know, making sure that everybody was okay who was like I was worried about like, you know, on this playing on the other, you know, all the people who died in, you know, the just all okay. these atrocities and everything, you know what I'm saying? And they're okay. You know, they're all right. Yeah, because they're with anyway, you. So, yeah. Yeah, and I could feel like, I could feel like physically even, like, um, like, 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 like pressure on, on my, like, arm and, like, and on my and on my um, shoulders, and I felt, I it was, like, amazing, like, the present, and it, I was writing the words, like, words with the number 11 in it, like, will, and pillar, and all yellow, and all these, like, you know, and then I was, and then I started decoding in Hebrew, I'm like, oh, my goodness, Shema, that means listen, and Hashem means the name, and it's the same letters, you know, and I was just seeing everything, and, and it was all, you know, and then my, my friend Will, that night he he almost died and he was in a hospital and I was staring at the at the flame and I had written his name and um, that's when he was like kind of like in the in between place and he he made it and he came over the next day and I'm like he's like yo I was in the hospital last night and you know so he was here during the whole thing 
so we had that energy there. You know what I'm saying? Like the yin and the yang. You know what I'm saying? But he wasn't ready for it because every time I lit the candle, he kind of like would fade away. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't like he wasn't ready for it, but we were like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but anyway, I'm, I, I hope I'm making sense, but it has to be. I don't really. I I, I really like. I wish it was like we were all getting together and doing this together, but it really is like on it on your own, and then we come together after that because you have to right. really want to know and understand. And it has to be out of love because I'm just so tired of, like, just, you know, the madness and the gossip and the, the grudges. And it's just, like, it's so stupid, you know? Like, like it's all about love. Aquarius is about, like, freedom, but freedom is love. That's free-flowing energy, you know, with no, no interference, no roadblocks, no blood clots. Right. So, anyway, I love you guys so much. You guys are so beautiful. I love you. I'm so, I'm so glad you're here. All right, we appreciate you too. No doubt. No doubt. There's a strong love frequency tonight. You know? Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, I'm like so I love that. Love that. I can't even fit into my little body. I'm like, oh, I'm here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just, especially during this time during cancer, we're touching deep ancestral waters, and that's such, like, the love is like, you know, it's just so beautiful, but. The tears are coming out. And every time I go outside, it starts raining, and the the trees started with the the wind. It was so beautiful. It sounded like they were clapping. I'm like, oh, stop! So I take it out. I'm like, oh no! I'm like, sure, why not? I was like, thank you, trees. It was like, you know, everybody. Like, I swear, I was on a phone. I was on a phone last night, and I was like, yo, just take it out, brother. Take it out. They're clapping for us. And by the way, you know, like, mine spell, if you flip over the M, it's wind. You know, like, we'll see Marcus Garvey in a world wind and the wind cries oh, yeah. and there's a missile flowing through the air. That's the, that's, that's the wind. That's the mind, you know. Like, like the globe, if you, when you're a G and you use your lobe, that's your frontal lobe, you know, the temple. The, love you all. I love you too. Yeah, we oh, love you too, love. goddess. No doubt. You know, love changes so things for the better. We'll be all here for to get this information out and try to um, clear up as much confusion as possible. Matter of fact, um, one of the books on which that is coming out, on which that brother L is referring to, is called "The Metaphysical End of Religious Confusion," in which that um, I had to do. Um, another one is called "The Kingdom of God Is Within You." Um, another one is called. Um, Divine Hymns of Agnaten. Um, another one is called The Blueprint to Great Health. And I'm writing all these books at the same time. So I'm getting ready to do a brother polite number and, and whip it out on y'all um, within a matter of months. So <laughs> so just um, stay tuned to um, I will. You know, to the books as they come out because they're going to be coming out back to back. All right? Because um, time to get this information out and stop playing and you know, try to get you know our knowledge up as much as possible. All right, uh, any closing remarks before we go, y'all? Yes, a bunch of love, love, love energy Racing. out here tonight. Um, all right. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm just, um, you know, just happy to be here with y'all and everybody and uh, just know that we are doing the work to the best of our ability and we're helping no ourselves out on, on the earth plane, on earth, uh, on the other planets, we're sending the message. Helping everywhere, you know. So. Multi and super, super and multi-dimensional. Love it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Queen. All right. Mm-hmm. Queen. I I love you know I love love. I can really relate to the goddess because I remember when I first got consciousness, um, I would cry too. You know, it was just so sad mm-hmm. about finding out this information. You, you and me 22, both. it's oh, like, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. and then when you try to tell your people, it's like they, they don't want to hear it. Wanna they want to talk about it. Like, what the hell is wrong with y'all? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. You know, thank you, so, you know we can really remove They're like the psychologist or something. <laughs> like when Morpheus, Morpheus is telling them, and Neil's like, no. <laughs> yeah. You know, and Morpheus like, I'm sorry I woke you up, Mia. 
Right. Yeah. But I think that you, people have to really want to, and it's like p- some people are waking up because it's just the frequency that's rising, the Kundalini, but those who, like, really, really, like, want to know, like, what, you know what I'm saying? Like, that takes a lot of work, and that, you know what I'm saying? Like, once you open those books up, friends drop off. You know what I'm saying? People, you think you're friends. Like, you, there's a lot of sacrifice that has to go on for wisdom, so we don't be ignorant. And honestly, like, when I learned... A lot of stuff, like, I almost went mad because I was, like, I was angry. But to know, I, you know, either it was, like, past, like, memory flashbacks or the soul showing me what's going on with them. But either way, I am them and they are me. And I was so mad, you know what I'm saying? Like, because I love so hard. And, you know, well, then you like, live and you learn. You definitely live and yeah, you learn. And I'm you learning. also learn. Yeah. yeah. And see, honestly, yeah. um, I, honestly, I, I think those grudges are a way to protect you, you know, mm. because you have to remember, you right. have to remember so you don't go just running off again with your um, heart on your sleeve, because you remember right. what like you said when you rock, did I was making rock gardens, remember I was telling you, sis, I was like, I was making a rock garden, I was watering rocks thinking that there are trees and they're going to grow, and like, you know, that's just really important that we understand wow. who is ourselves, we understand who is what and who is who. Like, we have to stop. I was, like, picking up, like, rats, like, thinking that they're little puppies and shit. I'm like, you know, like, we got to, I mean, like, that's great. The rats are here. They're here for a purpose, you know. Rats so star, you know. Rats are, yeah, but, like, for real, for real, like, you know, there's certain, that, like, I used to get upset that people wouldn't wake up and stuff, but now I think about it. Like, I've done so much work and everything, and it's like going to a graduation, somebody next to you has never gone to class and never, like, you know, like, doesn't have any loan to pay and and shit like that, and they just get to graduate through, you know what I mean? Like, I'll be pissed off if I see some people that, like, you know, didn't earn or do their work and if they're at the star gate, and I'm like, what the hell are you doing here? I might be like, what the fuck? <laughs> you pissed off. <laughs> or, like, it's all divine. And I was angry about it too. And then, like the Most High, like was like, no, it's none of your business where they are. But they're they're where they need to be, on their surface scraping level for for a reason. It's not it's not about you. And move on. You know. And I'm right. like, okay, cool. So I'm not gonna get upset. They don't want to come. They don't like. They want to be down here, and you know, participate in the madness and watch it happen. That's cool. That's fine with me. You know. There's only like. You know, but it's cool that the Jehovah Witness people are waking up, but if anybody can just ask them to please, they, they, the pamphlets, there's so much paper, they really don't have to use so much paper. Like, that's a lot of trees that are, like, being, <laughs> that's, only, that's my only problem with that. I just wanted to put that in, so you're saying about that. But, um, because mm-hmm. I just, you know, they, they gave me this whole huge pamphlet. I'm like, that's a lot of paper. How about we start planting trees? Well, actually, um, if you want to, now I break this, well, this is from a book, but basically, uh, if you want to start helping out the elemental realm and helping out the fairies and stuff, what you do is you just start recycling and just helping, um, you know, basically taking up the litter. And that's one of the ways... Oh, yeah, picking up sacks. Section. Oh, yeah, I'm always picking up litter. And, it, like, when it's in my if it's in my path, I pick it up because if you're not part of the solution, you are the problem. And solve cell of love. And also, um, like... I, I make I it's, I'll send you guys some. Um, I have jars that I mod podge, like made into pencil jars and stuff. And like I have so many that I like decorated and stuff. I can I'll be glad to send you some. So that's that's right on. I'm so glad that I really don't like. So I'm not here to add to the landfill, you know. Okay. That was so beautiful. This is such a blessing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Guys like a hug from within and beyond about. All right, all right, all right. Well, we're getting okay, ready to head out. Love. We appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you. We love you, too. And um, definitely keep mm-hmm. on spreading that information because that's what we do. On First World Radio, we get out as much information as possible. All right, as yeah. possible. All right? Um, yeah. You know? So um, we get ready to hit you all up. You know, with um, a song here. Let's see.